This video addresses questions about why we need agreements on data ownership, who owns the data and who has the right to be named as an author on publications. Throughout the video we use the term data to cover not only data sets in the traditional sense but also documentation, reports, videos, images, etc. Agreements should give clear rules regarding data ownership. This helps ensure the relevant people have access to the data when they need it. This includes both the researchers during the project and the public at large in the longer term. When agreements are made at the start of the project, potential problems that often occur during projects, such as researchers leaving and taking the only copy of the data with them, or students refusing to share the data, can be avoided. So who owns the data? While many individuals and groups could feasibly claim they own the data, this could include whoever funded the project, the principal investigator, the organisations involved in the research, the individual researchers, scientists, field workers, etc. who have worked on the project, the data manager, the survey respondents who provided the data, the general public, etc. You might consider the following principles when drawing up your ownership agreement. Research data belongs to institutions and not to individuals. It's only institutions that are able to ensure long-term security of the data. When there are collaborating institutions, then the data generated is owned jointly by those institutions. Data collected with public funds is public property and we have a responsibility to ensure the maximum value is realised from it. It's also a good idea to include rights and responsibilities in your agreement. Scientists and researchers have a right to recognition for their work, but at the same time, if they are generating data using public funds, they have a duty to use the data for the purpose for which funding was provided and to publish their findings. Intellectual property rights should be established in the agreements between collaborating institutions. Ownership and IPR should be managed in such a way as to balance the interests of scientists, institutions, donors and society as a whole. So what about authorship? There are many benefits to being a published author. In particular, it gives you recognition for your work and it enhances your CV. But at the same time, there are responsibilities. You are responsible for the accuracy of the results and interpretations in the publication and you may need to defend these results. To be listed as an author, you must make a substantial contribution to the conception and design of the research or to the analysis and interpretation. You must be involved in drafting the paper or critically reviewing it for intellectual content. And you must have approval of the final version prior to publication. All three of these criteria must be satisfied for you to be listed as an author. Being included as an author when you have not fulfilled these criteria is dishonest. On the other hand, not including someone who does fulfill these criteria denies them recognition for their work. What about editors? Well, an editor must review, comment on and approve the content of the paper. They are responsible for the content quality. Simply making changes highlighted by others or changing the formatting does not make you an editor. A data ownership agreement is essential. This protects the rights of all those involved in the project, from the respondents through to the scientists, the donors funding the research, and helps ensure data is used for the intended purpose. Authoring papers has wonderful benefits but also responsibilities. Ensure that you deserve the recognition associated with being an author.